And here is one more question uh, from College Board Study Guide. Um, FRQ questions that they found for you on the topics that you asked me. So the left end of the rod of length D and rotational inertia I is attached to a frictionless horizontal surface by a frictionless pivot as shown in the diagram. Point C marks the center midpoint of the rod. The rod is initially motionless but is free to rotate around the pivot. A student will slide a disc of mass m, they show you the disc um, with some velocity, so of mass m disc toward the rod with the velocity v sub zero perpendicular to the rod and the disc will stick to the rod a distance x from the pivot. The student wants the rod disc system to end up with a, as much angular speed as possible. Suppose the rod is much more massive than the disc. To give the rod as much angular speed as possible, should the student make the disc hit the rod to the left of point C, at point C, or to the right of point C and briefly explain your reasoning. So the maximum torque will cause the maximum angular velocity or the maximum change of angular velocity because um, torque is equal to force times the distance and um, it is perpendicular so sine theta so we don't have to write sine theta because they say it's perpendicular. So um, I'm just going to keep force times the distance. And it also equals to uh, inertia times acceleration, angular acceleration, which is the change of the angular velocity over the time. And so the largest torque is going to cause the largest change of the velocity. And I see that the farther away, so the force doesn't matter, it's going to be the same force because the velocity is the same. So the farther away you have um, the rod, the farther away you have the disc hitting the rod, the stronger is going to be um, the change of the velocity. So instead of D, they use X in this case. So the larger your X is equal, is going to be there, the more... Um, Inertia of the, the rod does not change, it just stays with the rod as it is. Um, the force is not going to be changing because you have um, change of the kinetic energy and um, hitting to the energy stored in their uh, disc is not changing until like it hits the rod. And um, so uh, with the largest X, you're going to get most change of the velocity. So you want to hit it to the right of point C. For B, they say, um, on the internet, a student finds the following equation for the post-collision angular speed um, of the rod, W is the angular speed of the rod, with this equation, and they give you the equation, regardless of whether this equation for angular speed is correct, does it agree with your uh, quantitative response in part A? And in order, in other words, does this equation for W have the expected dependence as responded in part A? So in part A, I wrote this formula, right? And um, they say that omega is equal to mass of the disk, distance and initial velocity, divided by um, inertia of the rod. So in what I see from my equations, my explanation, I said that um, velocity or the change of the velocity will be equal to the force it applies, the distance, 
and um, time and the divided by i so and we said that the larger velocity will be caused by how far um, I'm gonna hit the rod and in this case I also see they um, say in this formula that it's um, linearly proportional so with an increase of x your angular velocity increases so my answer is gonna be yes it has a relationship that supports my statement in a for c they say another student derived an equation for the pass collision angular speed w of the rod makes a mistake and comes up with the formula that is um here they give you this formula without deriving the correct equation how can you tell that this equation is not plausible in other words that it does not make physical sense briefly explain your reasoning so let's write the equation so we can talk about it we have inertia x v squared and mass of the disk and d squared and d squared is um so your d is this part this is your d and this is your x and the disk has some initial velocity so coming back to this formula i see that the more inertia is in the rod the more velocity it will have so here is the first red flag so that is not true um, relationship between velocity and x is okay velocity and and the distance how far it uh, strikes is also okay and um also the more mass the disc has the more velocity i should have so there's two red flags over here the more mass i have the more kinetic energy the um the more momentum or kinetic energy the disc has so the more energy stored or transferred into the rod will cause more velocity and um, the more inertia the rod has the more difficult it will be to change its angular velocity so you would have to um, apply more force to change its angular velocity so here are the two red flags that i see in this equation so for part D, um, they say for parts D and E, do not assume that the rod is much more massive than the disc. Immediately before colliding with the rod, the disc's rotational inertia about the pivot is given. So rotational inertia of the disc is given. And its angular momentum with respect to the pivot uh, is um, m disc oh, with this multiplication is the formula error so it's m times m disc times v sub zero times x derive an equation for the post collision angular speed of the rod express your answer in terms of um, d m disc so it's the same m disc as right here so inertia x and um, initial velocity and physical constant as appropriate so every time when you have a problem where you have to um, find the final angular velocity it's most likely conservation of angular momentum so you can say conservation of um, initial momentum is equal to the final momentum initial momentum you have um, Immediately before colliding with the rod, the disc's rotational inertia about the pivot is given. And um, inertia times, so the momentum linear is mass times velocity. The momentum angular is inertia times um, angular velocity. So for, um, for initial, I only have the disc that is moving. 
its inertia is given, which is m of the disk x squared, and it will hit at the distance x from the point of rotation. So it hits at the distance x from the point of rotation, this part. So in order to write my um, angular velocity, I have linear velocity. So my angular velocity is going to be um, v sub zero x and equals to, so the rod does not have angular momentum before, and equals to for angular momentum after, I have um, inertia of the rod plus inertia of the disk, or, which is disk times x squared, and both of them times the angular velocity. And this is the final. And I'm looking for the final velocity. So express your answer in terms of, and then you have to find angular momentum, derive an equation for post-collision angular speed. So I'm looking for the final, and that is equal to m disk x squared, or x cubed, v sub zero divided by um, i plus m disk x squared. I have had um, this explanation in a different video. I'm going to include the link for this explanation um, to another AP Physics 1 video and to um, some online explanation of this part. And for the last part, consider the collision for which your equation in part D was derived. Except now, suppose the disk bounces backward of the rod instead of sticking to the rod. Is the post-collision angular speed of the rod when the disk bounces off the uh, of it greater than, less than, or equal to um, post the post-collision angular speed of the rod when the disk sticks to it? And again, it's related to that video that I just mentioned. Um, watch the other um, video before um, if you don't understand what you're gonna see right now. So we have um, momentum before is equal to momentum after. I'm still going to use angular momentum before is equal to momentum after. For your angular momentum before, you have the mass of the disk. I'm just going to write disk. Um, it was mass of the disk, x squared, inertia, times v sub zero x. That's angular momentum before. and momentum after you have inertia of the rod and final velocity of the rod and then you um, also have plus the momentum of the disc angular afterwards so that is going to be m of the disc um, x squared and times now you have negative velocity. I do not know if it's the same, so I'm going to write just final times x, the distance how far um, it hits the rod. So the question is, is the post-collision equation speed of the rod when the disk bounces off greater, less on? So I have post-collision final is equal to m dx squared. I'm going to subtract this from both sides and I'm going to take this part out so and x. So this part out with x. So I can write x to the third. What's left is v sub zero uh, minus negative so that's plus v final and divided by inertia of the rod. And let's compare it to the equation that we had earlier. Before we had the equation that was the final, so for, for d part, we had the final velocity is equal to 
m of the disk x to the third v initial x divided by i plus m disk x squared so if i compare these two so this is when the disk bounces back and this one is when the disk sticks i see this difference in these two equations at first in this case um, on the top one the second one when the disk um, bounces back the final velocity is added to the numerator so this one is already bigger compared to that one and um, numerator and then also i see this denominator is larger than the one um, when the disc bounces back so i also see this part is smaller compared to the one that when the disc sticks so from this equation i see that when the disc bounces back you will definitely have greater than final velocity of the rod and i also will add the video where you can see um, example of it as well and that was it for this question